Dear students, this is Devo Prashad Mukhopadhyay, Assistant Professor of Mechanical Engineering, Sri Ramakrishna Institute of Science and Technology, bringing you this lecture on welding part three, covering electric resistance welding, brazing, and soldering. Subject: Manufacturing Process One, Second Year, Third Semester, Diploma in Mechanical Engineering. Dear students, we have already covered welding part one and part two, which took care of gas welding and electric arc welding. Both these welding methods are fusion welding under under without any application of pressure. Electric resistance welding is welding by resistance heating and by the application of pressure. <clears throat> In front of you, the schematic diagram of an electric resistance welding machine. You can see the pressure cage, which actually reads the hydraulic or pneumatic pressure that is applied between the two electrodes, which is shown here, which is shown here, electrodes. Then there is a knee of the machine, and there is a water line which cools the both the electrodes because the, there will be heat generation through resi resistance during resistance welding. Now we have a heat regulator and we have a water supply system and there is a foot switch. This is the actual principle of electric resistance welding. We have shown here two electrodes, one on the top and another on the bottom and between them the two plates are placed who will be welded. Now, electric current is passed from a power source through the electrodes and since the resistance at the junction of the plates are highest because of the air gap, heating will be maximum there because we know that heat is equal to I square R into T when I is the current flowing through and R is the resistance. So heat will be proportional to the resistance and since you know at the junction of the plates the resistance will be the highest so heating will be also taking place and there will be a nugget form which is actually the uh, metal in plastic condition and when the electrodes are withdrawn or the currents are stopped this will be solidified and welding will be done at that particular spot. That is why the other name of this welding is spot welding. Principles of resistance welding. Resistance welding is conducted as follows. Apply force and current through electrodes. Contacted metal parts to be welded and resistance heat is generated at the interface of the metal parts and makes a nugget, resulting in melt joint. Though a large current flows, there is no danger of an electric shock because only low voltage is impressed. Features of resistance welding. No flux such as solder is necessary, so welded parts can be easily recycled. Spatter and ultraviolet ray are most unlikely to be generated. Consequently, clean and neat work site is realized. Easy operation as only pressing button facilitates process automation and does not require trained skills unlike arc welding and gas welding. As this welding is performed efficiently in a short period of time, it is suited for a high volume production at a low cost. Since welding is done in short time duration, it gives less heat affected area on workpiece, resulting in beautiful appearance with less indentation. Electrical facility is required in some cases due to use of large current. Optimum welding parameters must be figured out before actual welding since those parameters depend on the material and thickness of the parts to be welded. Welding condition setting must be prepared. Visual inspection is difficult because welded portion cannot be checked from the outside and this is a big advantage for the automobile parts welding as in that case nothing you know, the welding spot will cannot be seen from the outside and the outside body remains clean. Resistance projection welding. This is another version of the resistance welding 
uh, variation of the resistance welding i should say in which current flow is concentrated at the contact surfaces of interest by an embossed cold headed or machine projection the projections effectively localize the current forcing the parts to be heat predominantly at the mating surfaces this rapid interfacial heating allows the application of resistance projection welding across a wide range of applications not feasible by conventional resistance spot welding you can see from this figure that because of the formation of the weld is high, highly localized the process is considerably more energy efficient than other resistance welding processes then we come to seam welding seam welding in seam welding when you, if we go to the description first resistance seam welding is a variation of resistance spot welding with the main difference between the welding electrodes are motor driven wheels rather than stationary rods ideal for sheet metal fabrication this welding method passes an electric current through the sheet of metal to be joined while they are held together by a mechanical force in a lap configuration between the shaped copper electrodes as with other types of resistance welding fusion is produced where the sheet surfaces comes into contact due to this being the point of highest electrical resistance and thereby the place where heat generation is at its highest we can see here now and uh, you can see that the <coughs> the two rollers the two rollers the upper roller and the lower roller are both uh, electrodes in this case and the current is passed through a sliding contact so shown here in a different color so the current while the current flows through the side sliding contact and through the upper roller to the lower roller and the circuit is completed and the welding will be while the rollers are rotating the two parts to be joined are drawn in the in the direction of the arrow and the welding is done to the full length unlike spot welding this welding is a continuous welding and it is called a seam welding now here i will uh, show you to 3d animation on uh, 3d animation on resistance spot welding and uh, on seam welding uh, just a minute Now this is the seam welding uh, resistance, uh, seam welding uh, automation shown. Seam welding automation shown. This is the resist resistance seam welding machine. You can see physically. Now there is one plate which is placed on the other plate in the lap joint condition, and the plates are passed through the two rollers which is shown in the machine. Two rollers. One is the wheel electrode upper and wheel electrode lower, and the workpiece is there. and when the wheel starts rotating wheel starts rotating seam welding are used to produce continuous joint between two work piece when the roller start welding the material progresses through the through the rollers and the welding is completed you know in a c throughout the length unlike that of a spot welding which is done at a spot only the applications are you can see here the brewery tanks the ship containers all the seams are welded by this method then heat exchangers then motor casing nuclear components and pressure vessels next we will go to the video of spot welding so okay, now which the video of the spot welding the 3d animation video of the spot welding now in spot welding there are two arms which you can see two electrodes unlike rollers there is two electrodes and there is a rocker arm and one fixed arm so what happens is 
the the electrodes are now phased apart and then the material will be fed in between them the two plates are placed one above the other to be welded and then the metal pieces are placed between the two copper electrodes and current is passed so you will just now see that the electrodes will come down and now the current is passed so now the current is passing and the welding is done at that particular spot so that is why it is called spot welding it can be done at several spots and the plates will be permanently joined the pieces are heated at the area of contact by electric resistance and you can see here uh, how the uh, how the welding is done that period that that particular portion gets heated by electrical current and a uh, and these are the applications you see on a base plate a frame is welded and in the automobile industry uh, there are many parts on the body which are done like this this is another framework where resistance welding is done this is in a manufacturing industry this is again that sheet metal work which is being shown this is the fabrication ventilation ducts which is produced by resistance welding and there are many other applications so we have now gone through the process of uh, the process of the process of resistance seam welding and spot welding next we will go to we we have seen the seam welding machine also now we will go to soldering and brazing you all have must have heard about soldering and brazing also soldering and brazing are joining processes where materials similar or dissimilar are bonded together using a heating method and a filler metal without melting of the base metal that's the most important in other welding the base metal was also melted because the temperature was much higher the filler metal melts wets the base metal and subsequently flows by capillary action wetting the base materials by filler metals is enabled by the use of a suitable flux or by acoustic vibration the difference between soldering and brazing lies in the temperature of the wet heating process soldering occurs at temperatures less than 450 degrees centigrade see how much lower it is than arc welding arc welding it is 13 1400 degrees centigrade or 1500 degrees centigrade and brazing occurs at temperatures over 450 degrees centigrade the heat heating of the filler metal can be accomplished by various methods including hot plate induction torch and furnaces <coughs> In soldering, the filler metal known as solder is an alloy of lead and tin. The solders containing 45 to 60 percent tin in general purpose solders, having rapid solidification properties, solders having equal percentage of lead and tin are used for stainless steel, and solders having tin up to 90 percent are used for higher strength soldering. Brazing is used for metals having melting point higher than 450 degrees centigrade. the filler metals here are copper based and silver alloys we have come to the end of the welding chapter which is actually covered by group c of the syllabus so with casting and welding we have finished group c of the of the syllabus for manufacturing process 1 thanks thank you students